The implication of being able to do multi-screen video is that we're no longer confined to having to work with a TV screen. We can now start to do immersive environments and, and that in turn means that the video is becoming more and more part of the set design on stages and at venues. And we don't have to follow the old rules. We don't have to work with square video anymore. We can work with round video. We can, we can make the video any shape we want and just integrate it as a component in a multimedia show. So uh, let's just have a look at this little example that I've made up here in Modulate. Well, let's start off by looking at the individual screens. Uh, we, as you can see, we've got one image going right across all three of them. Then over here on the right, we've got uh, this little thing, which I've, uh, I've animated in After Effects, so it's, the movie itself is spinning, but, but it is circular. And it's got these transparent sort of uh, grills on the sides to make it that little bit more interesting. Now here in the middle we've got uh, two sort of off art pictures that are being rotated by Modulate and over the top of that in the centre we've got a blue mask sort of grows out and then recedes again. That's been done by the auto scale. And uh, we've also got a movie and again a circular movie with a degree of transparency on the edge overlaid on top of that mask. Over on the left we've got, we've got something a little unusual going on. It's actually a little cluster of four movies and they're all bouncing away merrily. They've all got different settings of auto scale. Uh, they've all got the same movie but it's uh, playing at slightly different speeds so you see uh, different parts of it at the same time. And to, to make it stand out from the background we've dropped in a black mask. And these, these are all uh, luma keyed so that the overlay over the top of each other and makes this sort of very confusing little bouncy jumbling thing going on. How exactly did we go about making this? So if like me you, uh, you run Modulate from a laptop, the key to doing all these multiple screen presentations is going to be the Matrox triple head to go, which here has managed to convince the laptop that's connected to one big monitor that just uh, happens to spread nicely across the three monitors that I've got on my desk. Of course you, uh, you don't have to be as adventurous as this and uh, you could always use the triple head for go for, uh, for showing three movies at the same time on three different screens. No reason to uh, stop you doing that. Where you will find the problem is if you try and show one movie across three screens because almost, unless you're shooting stuff specifically for this format, you'll find that almost everything doesn't fit and you're either losing people's heads or people's feet. Or, uh, or something else. So uh, if you are going to go super wide, then the more abstract the better. The actual uh, amount of uh, video information that's being put out across these three monitors is uh, 3840 pixels wide by 1024 high. So this thing is going to be very heavy on your video RAM and if you've not got a lot, you're just not going to be able to drive your output at this higher resolution. You're going to have to lower it down to something your computer can handle. But uh, as in all cases, the more video RAM you've got in your computer, the faster Modulate's going to work and the more it's going to be able to do. So once we've attached the triple to go, we just want to start off by going into Modulate's preferences, setting the preview panel to 4 to 1. That's going to make it a lot easier for us to position our clips in the video space. So let's start off with the background. It's a still image and we're going to use the auto rotate to uh, get it moving. There it goes. And we're going to duplicate this layer and change the color slightly. Let's uh, luma key it so we get some transparency. And we'll get it spinning in the opposite direction. And this one's spinning really, really fast. So it's, it's giving us a false impression of its speed. There it goes. If I slow it down, you can see how fast it's actually spinning. So if I speed it right up, we get this really sort of strange stroby spinny pattern that I really like. We're going to drop uh, our little mask in the centre. That's going to move up and down with the auto scale, relatively straightforward. And on top of that, we're going to drop our little movie and that's not going to move. And the mask just gives it this, this sort of extra dimension of uh, almost like it's breathing in and out. So over on the uh, left hand side, we're going to drop uh, another mask in. This is the original mask, we've not changed the colour black and uh, on top of that we're going to drop 
one of these things. Now this has already been animated with the auto scale. If I turn it off, you can see it's just this strange little uh, video feedback loop. It's, uh, it's got exactly the same shape as the mask there. And uh, we're going to duplicate that, change the parameters slightly on the, the auto scale and the playback speed so that they're not exactly the same. Duplicate it again, change the parameters again. And so we've got four of them uh, up there in the corner all doing their own little thing. Finally, we're going to drop in the spinning clip of the girl from the vintage movie. That gives us all our key components for this uh, up there and working on the screen. And of course, it's modulated, so we can change it any time we want into any configuration we want. Change the color, the speed, anything, anytime. It's absolutely flexible, and uh, the only limit is going to be your imagination.